Welcome to Comics Bazaar, the channel of comics commentary and arcana. This video features Wolverine number 39, cover dated May 1991. And this is a very eye-catching and attractive cover by Mark Silvestri, inked by Dan Green, featuring Storm in front of the cover logo there. Interesting color choice to have her costume colored in gray. Um, obviously, to distinguish, I would say to distinguish it from the white of the cover logo. Then we've got a very bestial looking Wolverine seemingly drooling there as well on the cover and looming over the figure of LCD, who is an android created by Donald Pierce in an, an android packing uh, plastic explosives. And her whole program is to have Wolverine come into physical proximity to her when she will explode and take him with her. Yeah, so a very, very, very fine cover, in my opinion. I think it's excellent and a good choice, finally, to put Storm on the cover too, especially in this particular era of the increasing and exploding popularity of the X-Men. So let's open this one up to the splash page. And it's an intriguingly designed splash page where we have Wolverine in silhouette here, racing towards the warehouse. Uh, the upper floor of which uh, LCD has called for help from. And you can see that the warehouse, there's an inferno raging in the warehouse. The title of the story is Deconstruction and the creative team, Larry Hama script, Mark Silvestri pencils, Dan Green inks, Pat Brousseau letters, and Mark Chiarello on colors. So Wolverine says, there's a little kid trapped up there, Storm Darling, witnesses said that android you just ripped apart had a little girl hostage, Logan. So they're putting things together and they haven't quite got the story 100% just yet. So let's continue with things where we've got LCD there appearing from the window, calling for help, saying that the flames are getting closer. And a question I had in the previous video on the prior part of this three-part story is, well, why doesn't Storm use her elemental powers to put out the fire? Um, well, it seems just the priority to begin with is to see if they can get the girl out before doing anything else. But LCD has her programming. You stupid meddler, she says to herself regarding Storm. I don't need to be rescued by you. I need Wolverine to grab hold of me so I can fulfill my prime directive to de detonate the plastic explosives that constitutes most of my mass and reduce him to a fine red mist. So she says this ought to keep that flying lady out of my hair. So she sets some more um, explosions going in the warehouse. And Storm herself says, the fire is too intense. I can't get near. So Wolverine says, and it's a great three-quarter profile on his face, top up angle, really nicely uh, drawn by Silvestri and nice black spotted and lighting by Dan Green and the inks as well. So Wolverine responds, you stay put. You just let the old knucklehead head takes care of this. And I think that this is the very first time that Larry Hama writes that line for Wolverine. It's the first time in this particular run that he uses that term. That's not a Claremont term. That's one that Larry Hama devised. And like I said, this is the first time that Wolverine uses that phrase. So Storm pleads with him not to do it, but he goes into the fire because he is, of course, heroic. It's just fire, he says to Storm, can't do nothing but burn. And now she gets around to whipping up a thunderstorm to see if she can douse the flames. But Wolverine says, thanks for the cloud burst, Aurora, but this blaze looks like it's gonna need a regular monsoon to put the damper on it. And here's LCD still begging for help. And something I wanna note is that Mark Silvestri does a really good job on drawing LCD as a five-year-old girl. And that's difficult to do for artists. I mean, I don't know if it's uh, really the most charitable thing to do this, but to say that somebody who's a great artist otherwise, but who never really did children well was John Byrne. Um, you look at John Byrne's children and they look like uh, little people rather than children. So Silvestri like doing a really great job on LCD throughout this issue, drawing her as a five-year-old girl. And then there is a scene switch to her compatriot out on the boardwalk. Albert was ripped to shreds by Wolverine in their fight in the previous issue. 
and the last thing that LCD said to him was to get to safety and save himself. I was just the bait, he thinks. She's the main event. And then he continues thinking as he falls down to the beach below. Everything was so simpler before she opened us both up and improved us. Now I know too much, now I feel too much. And then he makes contact with her because they have, uh, they are in radio contact with each other. That's something that LCD whipped up as well. Oh, Elsie, can you hear me? He asks, did Wolverine come in for you? Are you going to carry out your prime directive? Great spotting of blacks here as well. Great use of silhouettes. Now that is a time-saving device um, in terms of speeding up uh, the drawings for the page, not having to do the detail on the backs of the heads of these characters here or all the detail under the boardwalk. But aesthetically, it looks very good. And of course, Marvel put out the Essentials volumes of uh, uh, the Wolverine solo series, which included, got up to maybe volume two, um, included the Sylvester issues. And in black and white, this art just looks really, really great. But in color too, and uh, this is a nicely colored page here, I, um, in my opinion. So here we have Wolverine looking incredibly bestial as he's making his way through those flames. And in his first person dialogue, he's thinking there, funny thing about this mutant healing factor of mine, it sure doesn't cancel out any of the pain. Most times you can't bear the pain, you can bear the pain, if that's all there is that stands between you and what you gotta do. Still don't stop it hurting, hurting though. So, you know, Hama making the point there for readers that um, this isn't a simply, this isn't an easy thing for Wolverine to do. It is painful. And so that really points to his heroic determination in rescuing someone he believes is a, a real five-year-old girl. So here she is running for him and she's thinking, she's communicating with Albert. I can hear you, Albert. He's here, he came through all the flames for me. He's all burnt up, Albert. He's all burnt up and he still kept coming for me. He suffered for me and now he's going to die for me. So this ma marks a moment of conversion for LCD. She's determined now to stop the programming that is within her to fulfill her prime directive. It's just not fair, she cries there. Now that somebody really cares about me, it's going to be all over. But great art on these pages by Sylvester and Green. Tremendous image of Wolverine there. Another one of them here with um, his hair burnt off and his skin singed uh, to ash gray or brown from going through uh, the inferno. And now finally the flames are doused by um, Storm's cloud burst there, you can see. So then there's a scene switch to Australia and the Reaver's base. And Deathstrike now is healed from her uh, time trip and fight with Wolverine where she lost her arm. And Bonebreaker here is still wondering whether he should tell Donald Pierce about um, LCD's logic um, circuits being maxed out or not. Reese advising him, I like this, Bonebreaker, take it from me. You should never own up to anything unless you're forced to. Um, so Donald Pierce explaining to Deathstrike about his um, LCD strategy because she's skeptical about the whole business. He says, that's the genius part. LCD was programmed with the brainwave patterns of an actual five-year-old child. So that raises the question of, well, who was that? Um, and Pierce continues, um, Wolverine will believe She's real because she thinks like a real child. And so there we go. And Bonebreaker decides that he's not going to actually own up to his mistake, his blunder to Pierce. And now we pick up with Albert. So he emerges in one of the Venice Beach canals and he encounters the four uh, criminal goons there. And one of them decides to um, to cozy up to Albert. Trust me, Sally, he says, I got a feeling on this one. And he says to Albert, listen, pal, what was your name again? Albert, he says, you look like you could use some fixing up. How's about it? We help you out, you help us out. And Albert, you know, he takes the deal. He says, fine, but we have to leave here right away. LCD is gonna blow up any minute. So Albert's gonna try and help LCD um, himself as well. This is a great sequence here where Wolverine emerges from the ruins and ashes of the burnt out warehouse. 
Logan, you're all, and he says, yeah, like they say, if you mess with fire, you're gonna get burnt. And then you can see the speech balloon here, it's colored in, um, so you don't quite see it unless you're looking for it. Does it, she asks, hurt. Um, he fills in, not as much as it did a few seconds ago, he says. That's the one good thing about physical pain. Once it's gone, it's gone. Even the memory fades. Not like psychic pain. That just seems to hang around like sniffles in winter. And then he tells LCD to lighten up that it's over. Um, Storm says the same, you're safe. But now she admits it's not all right. I'm not a little girl and I'm not safe. I'm an android. I'm packed full of plastic explosives and right now I'm using all my concentration to override the detonation program. So now that's gonna be our focus for the rest of the issue. But this is a great sequence here, this three panels where Wolverine is growing back his hair and his skin is repairing itself all on the basis of his mutant healing factor. Really, really nicely done by Silvestri and Green. So we see the expression on Wolverine's face now. Um, he's uh, shocked and saying, well, what are you telling us? And Storm says, Logan, drop that thing and get away from it. So LCD reveals the uh, computer readout on her back. See, my proximity fuse is armed. It should have gone off as soon as Mr. Wolverine touched me. So she begs them to get away. But Wolverine is um, saying, says to Storm, I know what I'm doing, Storm. Best get yourself behind some cover. And LCD says, I don't want to die, Wolverine, not for me. Um, I don't want you to die, Wolverine, not for me. I'm just a thing, not a real person. But you can see Wolverine here thinking about the whole business and he's not going to let her die. He has belief that she's more than just a machine. And some of this is, of course, because of Wolverine's own background, because of Experiment X, because of his being turned into a living weapon. So there's a point of empathy there for somebody like LCD. And again, just great art um, um, by Silvestri and Green as well. Let's continue and get past the advertisements. So there's a nice speech here um, written by Hama for Wolverine where he says to LCD, I'm no philosopher and I'm sure no molecular biologist, but I got a good feeling that something that can make the decision to sacrifice itself for another creature can't be all machine. There's gotta be something human in there and that something is scared and hurting and I'm not about to leave it all alone to face the dark. So he tells Storm to clear the rubberneckers away. Nice shot there of the boardwalk again with all the bystanders and Wolverine is determined that he's not going to leave LCD B despite her protests. He tells her she's wrong, that he can do something, there's something I can do real good. The real thing I do best, and this is interesting, Hama kind of commenting on that uh, motto of Wolverine's developed for him by Claremont, I'm the best there is at what I do and what I do isn't very nice. Here's Hama rewriting that, the real thing I do best I don't give up, ever. And he's got that little smile on his face. Very good sequence there. And then, five levels underground in Maryland, there's a problem at the NSA um, computer uh, mainframe system. Um, and so they've been accessed by a phone modem in a radio hut store in Venice, California. So this technician asks that the FBI called it, be called in ASAP to investigate. But the sequence here, the chronological sequence seems to be off because this is before we see who's, who has hacked in to their mainframe computers there. Um, and then we're back with Wolverine and LCD and her uh, fusing system is armed 60 seconds to detonation. Um, but Wolverine's determined that he doesn't want her to give up. So she says she'll try to slow down the countdown to detonation. And you see, here's the thing. This is our explanation for who's hacked in to the NSA uh, bank of computers, like their, their mainframe um, computer system. It all happens here where the goons give Albert a ride to Radio Hut and he goes in with their protection and he's reading through some computer manuals here. There's some funny business with the clerk attendant or the store owner um, who um, is saying here, 
uh, sir, no browsing, sir, store policy. And this big goon, uh, Reno, says, don't bother him, four eyes. Can't you see he's reading up a storm? So he is indeed going through the book. Insufficient storage space, insufficient hardware access, more input, need mainframe access. If you're interested in a modem, we have, says the store owner, got my own. So he sticks his thumb into the side of the computer and the owner says, hey, take your thumb out of that, you can't. And then Reno here, I love the design of his face as well with his snub nose and his high forehead and quiff. Such good stuff from uh, Silvestri. He can't what as he points the end of his gun right up the store owner's nose. Great cartooning by Silvestri and the sweating there on his forehead as well. He can, he can, he can access anything he wants. So Albert says, I'm gonna be busy for a while. Try to find me everything on this list. And then we switch back to Wolverine and LCD. This is a really well-drawn page here where Wolverine says to her, listen, the LCD, there's gotta be a way to disarm this thing. Can't you cancel the program? So she explains the code is too complex. It's based on such a long series of random numbers that it would take hundreds of mainframe hours to. And then her arming sequence is initiated. She let her concentration slip. The store owner sees that um, Albert has hacked into the NSA uh, main banks um, and he's uh, explaining to us, the readers, like what, what is going on, what, what's happening here. You got into the National Security Agency's two acres of Cray computers in their underground bunker in Maryland. So that's what we witnessed earlier. So the, the sequencing there, the chronological sequencing was a little bit off in the story. Um, so here's more business with the store owner and Reno. Reno here getting uh, fed up with the store owner's whining. I hate whining, rouse me something fierce. Just look at that cartooning grotesque of Reno there and his snub nose. And he's still got the end of his gun like he's point, pointing it right up, uh, pushing it up uh, the store owner's nose. It's great cartooning by Silvestri. Let him burn out, what do I care? Yeah, he says. Um, regarding all his computers in the store. Nice close up there on Albert's face with this um, coolant or whatever it is uh, dripping out of his nose. It's not blood, remember he's uh, an android. So he says, we're not moving until the code is broken. Go back out and wait in the car. I'll get you all out of this when I'm done. Then back at the boardwalk, the rubberneckers are still there and the media has showed up. And I really like this line from um, one of the uh, media members, a TV presenter, um, a news reporter, saying this is Cindy Cates of News 57 reporting live from Venice Beach where a poignant human drama is being acted out and Hammer really catches like the phraseology of news reporters from the time and you know that her estimation of the poignancy of the drama is glib and superficial, she's just interested in a scoop, yes? So Wolverine still not giving up on LCD. She says she's scared. Is that what I'm feeling? Is this what fear is like? The countdown is going on in these magenta boxes. It's good stuff. Storm keeps telling Wolverine to, um, to uh, pack it in. You can't let a cleverly programmed construct get to you. She's not real and she's endangering a whole crowd of living humans. They're not listening to her. If you don't throw her it into the ocean, I'm gonna to have to make a decision. So Wolverine's determined. He says he doesn't give up. He said it earlier, nobody's throwing LCD into the ocean. He says, if she can't stop the clock, I'll cover her and absorb the blast. Then we'll see how good my mutant healing fact and my mutant healing power really is. That countdown is continuing there all the while. This is an interesting layout on this page, just four big um, panels, the countdown running in the middle of the page. And then they get the news about the arrival of the FBI at the radio um, hut on the other side of town. They have SWAT vans and snipers and helicopters. This guy thinks or says that means ultra sexy visuals. So they stampede to the other story. And here's Cindy Cates. This is Cindy Cates rerouting herself to the scene of an even more poignant human drama. I really like that, that's good humor from Hama. So now the crowd is gone and we've just left with Storm, Wolverine and LCD. And Storm is uh, basically still wondering, still skeptical 
and asking Wolverine, do you really believe um, that she can stop the sequence, the countdown sequence, deep in my gut, or arrow deep? She may have a mess of chips for her brain, but somehow there's a soul twinkling in there, he says. And then the scene switches to the other side of town and the arrival of the FBI outside that radio hut where Albert has finally broken the code while the goons are hiding out in the car hoping the FBI don't spot them. It's a nice bit of comedy there. So Albert's successful. He can save LCD. Everything's going to be fine. Let's go. We're finished here, he says to Reno and Molokai. And uh, they decide they're going to stay there because he hasn't seen the FBI or he doesn't care. LCD, this is Albert. He transmits to her. I broke the code. I'm transmitting a direct feed into your detonator system. So he's transmitting the code, the number code. And meanwhile, the FBI put it together that he's not human. He's an android or cyborg. And they're under instructions not to allow him to transmit anything out of his previous contacts with the NSA mainframe. So he's transmitting the code and um, Wolverine there asking, is there enough time? We're on a five, four, three, two uh, countdown. Albert gets blown away by the cops and the FBI, but does he get the code to her in time? Yeah, another great four panel sequence there. And then with moving the numbers around like this, Nicely placed, good stuff. And then finally, one, and she doesn't explode. Two, three, one. She gets the transmitted last sequence of the numbers, but Albert is blown right through the window of the, the shop front window of Radio Hut. Detonation sequence terminated, all firing systems safe. So big grin on Wolverine's face there. You did it, LCD. I knew you could, but it's not an entirely happy ending because everything's not all right Mr. Wolverine she says I'm trying to reach my friend Albert and his frequency is dead and this is intriguing too Sylvester and Green signed this page so we've got their surnames there and a date for the completion of this page the 12th of February 1991 so excellent like the middle chapter of a three-part story really really well done Fantastic art by Silvestri, great inking by Dan Green, pretty decent colors as well for the most part. Um, yeah, and um, some nice witty dialogue and some um, emotional moments as well and some insight into Wolverine's character. Larry Hammer thinking through who Wolverine is, separate from all the things that Claremont established. He's consistent with Claremont's version, but Larry Hammer moving on the characterization too. The letters page here regarding issues 37 and uh, 36 of the comic and lots and lots of praise for the new creative team of Hama and Silvestri. And even some advertisement of uh, Wolverine specials here in 1991, The Jungle Adventure, Bloodlust, and um, Reign of Terror as well. Well, uh, next issue, we reveal Albert's final fate as Wolvie returns to the X-Mansion where Forge struggles to find out what makes LCD tick. I do hope that you enjoyed this review and commentary on Wolverine number 39. Let me know your thoughts on this issue in the comment section to the video. If you enjoyed my review, please like the video on YouTube. It really does help the channel. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content like this.